Sankalp 2013, delegates are pondering over the issue of whether or not social enterprises impact investors, the entire ecosystem, can work together to achieve transformational change. Anurag Agarwal is Chief Executive Officer at IntelliCap and he knows this space, I think, like few others. IntelliCap, of course, has been a first mover enabler in this space. Anurag, glad you could spare the time. My pleasure. I'm going to put this in your words, this space. I'm not going to use the words, uh, the phrase or word industry. But this space, which is, in a sense, the intersection point of business and development. You've been tracking it very closely. In 2013, where we stand today, you know, how do you see, what's the lay of the land? How do you see um, things shaping up? So, uh, you know, we've been at, uh, at this uh, for about 10 years now and uh, got in very early where a lot of the lay of the land was undefined. I don't think it is defined properly yet. So we are still uh, grappling with some of those definitional issues. But what is most encouraging is that, you know, there is increasingly better talent that is getting into the space. So there is increasingly entrepreneurial activity that is happening in the space. A lot of it is still at a very nascent stage. So there is a lot of private enterprise that is getting and there's a lot of talent from the corporate world that is entering into the space and trying to solve some very core basic issues of, you know, access to education and healthcare and solving energy issues and, you know, trying to revive the agriculture industry, dealing with issues of financial inclusion. So those are the sectors and, uh, you know, industries, uh, potentially very large industries, which are still very nascent, that we are trying to solve by taking a business approach to development. Uh, primarily not because we have anything against the government or the not-for-profit sector because we believe these problems are, are at such a large scale that they will need to be tackled at scale and uh, there is only limited philanthropic capital that is available and while the government is trying to do its bit it's caught in its own bureaucracy and its own web so so we are trying to do and you know get people uh, aligned around this movement and step and in and fill the huge gap yeah and and uh, also hopefully you know get to a point where we can very actively engage with the government and with the not-for-profit sector. So the way I see it is that, uh, you know, no individual organization will be able to solve these big issues. So it will need to be done in a very collaborative format. And that's what we are trying to do through a forum like Sankal, where we are trying to bring people together and trying to ask some very basic and primary questions to ourselves and to everybody around the table and see what we can do to solve them. The fact that you're still asking basic and primary questions, is that indicative of um, a lot of maturing for this space that's still ahead? I mean, basically, in a nutshell, what I'm asking is, where are we today and how do you see the space growing, expanding its impact, expanding its influence? Yeah, I think uh, what used to happen in the past is that a lot of the work in the development sector used to happen through the not-for-profit organizations or we just expected the government to take care of everything, which obviously hasn't yielded results. And, uh, uh, you know, I mean, I take the example of microfinance where uh, people, the private sector did step in and successfully so, and there was a business model that evolved around it. But along with the business model, people were also making very tall claims of elevating uh, poverty and things like that. I think uh, the reason the, these questions are very important is because uh, I think we need to be realistic of what we are doing. I mean, if you're doing a business, you know, we need to be held accountable on business metrics. And when we are saying that we're, you know, dealing with poor people and dealing with them in a business format, we need to do that in a very responsible manner and, uh, you know, not make claims that are beyond what we are doing. So I think as business, you know, we, we, we have a specific transactional engagement or we, we kind of engage with that population and we should not claim more than what we do. So, so you, you, are, you are basically improving access and you're giving an opportunity in some form and your claim should be limited to that rather than, you know, making claims uh, of changing their lives and getting them out of poverty. A lot of that they'll have to do by themselves. I guess that's why you've <laughs> chosen to ask here that's at right. Sankalp, are we really impacting lives? That's right. So in a sense, you're sending a message out that a m message of caution out. Don't say that you're impacting lives loosely and irresponsibly. Absolutely. So while I think uh, individual organizations as a business, it will be too much of them, uh, too much uh, to expect of them to actually, you know, transform lives and bring people out of poverty. But I think if, if all of these uh, ecosystem players come together, then they can actually truly transform lives. 
key gaps, still glaring gaps that I you think, see? I uh, think uh, some of the key glaring gaps are uh, while there is a lot of interest and you know there are good talent that is coming into this uh, space to solve these problems, there's obvious gaps in terms of uh, you know just resources. So while there is a lot of resources with the government, that's not really flowing through. Uh, there's also major issue with uh, the enabling environment, so policy issues, etc. So again, for both of these, government becomes a key actor. And at this point of time, the engagement of the private sector with the government is very limited. So again, I don't think we've done enough in that direction yet, but we are working towards that. You've acknowledged uh, my next question up front, which is why then at Sankalp? Because there's so much, there's such a fit between, for a conversation between this space and the government. Why then at Sankalp do we not see a greater government representation? Because from the resource point of view, from uh, the fact that uh, the private sector can deliver, you know, much more efficient allocation and deployment of resources, why isn't there more government representation here? I think uh, uh, we are working towards that, and for that to happen, there are few things that need to be in place before that. So first level would be just awareness. Uh, many people in the government don't even know that something like this, the movement like this is happening. It's still too small for them. So size and scale is important. The next thing is that uh, you have to build trust and, and that uh, is not going to happen overnight. There have been so many examples of private individuals and organizations you know, taking the government for the right or the government officials and private people colluding and you know corruption is such a major issue today in the country so so responsible businesses trying to you know do business in a responsible way and and you know not uh, so while it's okay to make a profit are not profiteering from the poor that's one of the biggest concerns of the government and the politicians right that uh, you know it's a very important constituency for them uh, from a political point of view so, so all of this is holding so, the interaction so, so back. i think uh, you know that awareness and that trust and then actually the ability to do something uh, and to be able to demonstrate that, that actually is going to help the government and the politicians uh, because that's what they are expected to do. So if, they, if someone can help them to actually deliver results on the ground, that is actually a very cred uh, adds to their own credibility as well. So I would say in three steps, if, if you can make them aware, if you can build that trust factor and then you can demonstrate that you can actually do, make, you can actually make a difference on the ground which actually helps them in what they are trying to do. If we can achieve that, then I think the government uh, folks will be much more forthcoming. Well, related, but entirely different track. How's IntelliCamp doing? Because that will be a barometer of how this space is growing. Yeah, so IntelliCamp uh, is uh, doing fairly well. I mean, uh, we, we are a group of about 100 people at IntelliCamp and we have three subsidiaries. Uh, so which is uh, totally about 650 people as on date and growing. Uh, uh, we are able to attract the best talent not only from India from but from across the world. Uh, people are willing to come and work for us in this space at well below their corporate salaries. Although, you know, as our institution is growing, we are able to also you know match Offer that uh, match. Uh, so it's not a sacrifice that they are making, but they are you know, making uh, real career moves by working with us. And uh, what's most interesting about IntelliCap is that IntelliCap is actually trying to work with various entrepreneurs. So while we are not, while our subsidiaries are directly working on some of these core issues directly, uh, IntelliCap is an advisory company which works with other enterprises. So, so w at the heart of IntelliCap are the entrepreneurs who are trying to resolve these basic issues. And through our investment banking and consulting services and research, we are trying to build awareness and we are trying to, uh, you know, allocate capital and we are trying to build innovative models that will solve these core issues and and we are seeing very great very good traction not only uh, from entrepreneurs from startup entrepreneurs from you know people who are leaving very cushy jobs experienced people who are starting businesses to corporates who want to do stuff in the space and and you know we are trying to forge these alliances and trying to uh, so so the results at IntelliCap are very very encouraging and, okay. and are increasing at an increasing pace well, I was just <laughs> going to dive into give me a number <laughs> so that we have our evidence uh, of on the table. Is there a number you can share with us which is indicative? Whether it's the client base that's grown, whether it's, uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I shared a number on number of people, but uh, in terms of uh, what we've done so far, uh, we've raised uh, equity capital through our investment banking pra uh, practice of about $200 million for social enterprises spread across about 40 such companies. 
so far uh, sankalp itself uh, has seen participation of over 1000 enterprises over the years uh, over 30 of these companies have raised 130 million dollars uh, through i won't say through uh, by just participating in sankalp but did did help them in some form uh, our consulting team has done over 250 such uh, you know engagements with various clients from dfis to foundations to uh, corporate Businesses, sector yeah. uh, across uh, close to 20 countries now so so uh, while most of our work is still focused on india uh, we are actually expanding outside as well and the other focus is that we are trying to go deeper within india so instead of just focusing on the metros uh, we are trying to go to the low income states we took sankalp itself to be, uh, bihar last year and we intend to you know uh, take it across the low income states to build greater awareness again and uh, you know recognize interesting business models and interesting companies and channel capital to them well you've got a full plate and many busy years ahead anurag thanks very much for your time thank you manvi